my channel for those who don't know me i'm Desanja daily i'm a first year medical student at all saints university school of medicine in dominica i'm a jamaican studying in dominica and this channel is really about me documenting my journey and also um talking about different medical um talking about different things in medicine and for this month i want to talk about some different uh some things some awarenesses that you can look out for so for example this month is esophageal cancer awareness month testicular cancer awareness month and i think there is an infertility week as well so i will be trying to cover the the different awarenesses in each month so this video is going to be about esophageal cancer uh what it is the risk factors what different types of um syn syndromes or or diseases can bring about um esophageal cancer how you can try to avoid getting it and what are the early signs of it so we're going to head right into it and talk about what is esophageal cancer well first of all what is the esophagus so the esophagus is a tube that that's connecting your mouth <laughs> to your stomach and when you eat food you chew up your food you drink your juice whatever you're consuming it goes the, down that tube and it goes into your stomach so the esophagus is basically a tube connecting your mouth and your stomach so that you can digest food and have food to nourish your body right very important part of your digestive system but unfortunately the esophagus can be um at risk of developing cancers so there are two different type of cancers that you can develop in your esophagus if you see me looking down it is my laptop my notes are on my laptop Okay. The two main types of esophageal cancers are squamous cell um, carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is the most common type of um, esophageal cancer in the Western, um, in the United States and Western Europe. So this is mainly um, in the lower part of the esophagus. So in the esophagus, you have the upper part, the middle, and the lower part. So adenocarcinoma is mainly the lower part, the part that is directly connected to the stomach. And it is mainly caused by acid reflux. And it is major, majority of the times, it's linked to obesity. So the second type is squamous cell carcinoma. And this normally affects the upper and the middle part of the esophagus and it uh, is mainly due to smoking and alcohol consumption so we're talking about the two types squamous cell and adenocarcinoma now we're going to talk about the risk factors like some of the things that you may be doing or you see your friend doing or you see people in your life doing and it can give them like a, it can be a major risk factor for them to develop um, esophageal cancer later on so the first um risk factor is smoking so smoking can cause a lot of things smoking can cause not only cancer of the esophagus the main cancer cancer of the lung it can cause that type of cancer and lung cancer is not a cancer that you want to joke around with so I, i'm not giving medical advice i'm not a medical doctor i'm just saying that smoking is not the best thing you should be doing you know because it can cause a lot of things later down the line or even in present that you don't even know that's happening to you. The second thing is acid reflux. Now, acid reflux is basically when you're in your esophagus, you have something called constrictions. So you have, the, you have your upper constriction and your lower constriction that help. So your esophagus is a muscular tube basically and it helps squeeze the food down into the stomach. But... The, there are sphincters sphincters are like tightenings on the esophagus so the lower one that is right between you know and the stomach sometimes that people can have um a disorder where the the there is no constriction so the acid just comes up and that can lead to something called um GERD which is gastro esophageal reflux disease yeah 
and this is bad this is like a precursor to cancer of the esophagus so if somebody has GERD acid reflux GERD like that that is those two things are precursors to esophageal cancer I'm not saying that if you have acid reflux you do have esophageal cancer I'm just saying that if you have continuous acid reflux that cannot be controlled then you are at a higher risk of developing um, esophageal cancer that's all I'm saying the next thing is alcohol consumption so you know if you drink a lot of alcohol alcohol first of all has a lot of um, toxic harmful substances you know and it can cause different things to happen not only cancer but it can cause something called liver cirrhosis and for those who don't know liver cirrhosis basically means that your liver not working anymore and your liver can't carry out its normal function and the normal function of the liver is to well the liver have no function but the main function really and truly is bile product producing bile and helping to detoxify the body and is like a first way for medications to pass through your body like the liver also helps in that so by consuming alcohol smoking having acid reflux those are like major risk factors to you developing cancer now we're going to talk about something called barrett's esophagus so Barrett's esophagus is basically um if you ever heard your family members or friends talk about like they have heartburn whenever they eat or whenever they do strenuous activities they may feel like like there's fire in the chest like m more than likely it is um GERD or acid reflux so if they have GERD and then and if if they have GERD and GERD is untreated then um they end up having something called Barrett's, Barrett's esophagus so if you have acid reflux and you and you have it for like say you have acid reflux for five years like continuously everything you do you can get it better and then you can end up having something called Barrett's esophagus so Barrett's esophagus um, is a condition that results as a result of chronic GERD like chronic acid reflux like really really bad acid reflux and it's basically when the um, that part of the esophagus normally the lower part of the esophagus um, the lining changes like it changes from its normal um normal lining to the light to a lining that is similar to that of the stomach and if you if you have like basic understanding of your body then you know that your stomach has a lot of acid and if the if your esophagus cannot manage to protect itself then it will start to um change to that lining that the stomach has to protect itself and that is not good that is very bad if your esophagus is doing that because your esophagus is not supposed to do that because really and truly normally no acid is supposed to be coming up normally that is not right so the classic telltale signs are acid like they feel like they like they complain like they're having heartburn they feel like they can't breathe or they feel like um they can't really every time they do something strenuous they just they have that feeling or they eat food they have that feeling so normally as i've said before remember i tell you about the upper and lower constrictors uh those two um constrict the lower one is the problem in this case so let's talk about something called hiatal hernia so first before i even get down deep into hiatal hernia i need to like talk a little bit about the anatomy of the body so basically you know you have your upper part and your lower part right and normal in normal functioning you know the lower part has like your intestines your stomach your like anything below your diaphragm so if you know your diaphragm is right below your um rib cage 
so your respiratory organs and your heart and your esophagus and things like that up here and then everything else down here is like mainly digestive mainly mainly digestive and like excretory organs that are down um in your abdomen and then in your thorax you know you have your heart your lungs and things like that so your diaphragm basically have openings on it and each opening um allows a different structure to pass through so we're going to look at one main structure which is the structure the opening that allows the esophagus to pass through and remember i tell you that the stomach and the esophagus are connected now if you have a hernia if you if you guys understand a little bit about hernias then you'll understand where i'm going with this so if somebody has a hernia of like a they have a hiatal hernia it basically means that the stomach is coming up through that opening that the esophagus is going through instead of being below the opening and that is not normal right that that also causes a lot of discomfort and a lot of um problems so it is very common um among people above the age of 60 and it is also common in um pregnant women so there are three different types of um her hiatal hernias you have sliding hiatus hernia fixed hiatus her hernia and complicated or serious hiatus hernia so the sliding hernia is when the stomach basically goes back and forth between the thorax and the abdomen like you go up down up down that is sliding hernia and then fixed her hernia is when the upper part of the um stomach is just fixed in the in the chest and it's not supposed to be there that's not where your stomach is supposed to be guys it's supposed to be under your diaphragm so if it just fixed come up you know that will cause problems and and that causes increased potential of for problems for your esophagus due to this fixed um hernia and then the complicated or serious um hiatus hernia is when the stomach literally like not in a regular position like it just come up and that is that is very serious and like a major problem but it is very uncommon so then you have um the symptoms in most patients there are no symptoms but for um sliding hernia they may have heartburn or regurgitation regurgitation basically mean that the food that you put, you're trying to get down is coming up and when um stomach acid reflux when it comes up you know back into the esophagus some people might have chronic um acid reflux and this may cause injury and bleeding and they can have anemia or a low red blood cell count it can result in this you know with every cancer there are different um symptoms that you can look out for and for um esophageal cancer some of the symptoms that you can look out for is blood in stool difficulty or painful swallowing feeling very tired heartburn GERD remember gastroesophageal reflux disease coarseness or coughing loss of appetite pain in the throat or back and unintentional weight loss those are some of the symptoms that you can look out for i'm not saying that if you have these symptoms you definitely have it remember i am not a medical doctor but these are some of the um symptoms that people who might have esophageal cancer can have now how do medical professionals diagnose esophageal cancer so normally these things take a while to like come up because if somebody have like acid reflux and they maybe don't have it a lot then then probably not gonna have um esophageal cancer but if it's a case where them have constant GERD and you know a lot of people in the Caribbean like they're not going to if them have a lot of people in Jamaica I know have um, acid reflux and them say oh it's just acid reflux like it's nothing you know but some of them suffering from this for years and like them just sit down with it 
but i'm not blaming them because it's a lack of um information and it's a lack of them not understanding and not knowing that this this is like very serious because normally they wait until like last minute when they get really really bad and unfortunately the doctors really can't do not much because it gets so bad but yeah so normally to diagnose it sorry they normally do a endoscopy an endoscopy basically means that they push something down your throat and that they can see what is going on in your esophagus they can do a biopsy where they take a piece of tissue and analyze it and look at the findings that they may um see like histological findings where they can see the cells and because you know cancer is basically um abnormal division of cells cells that just grow random and don't have any um control in how they grow they just grow 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 that is cancer or they can do a endoscopic ultrasound a ct scan a barium swallow a barium swallow basically means that they swallow a substance that causes contrast so when they do like a so when they do like an x-ray the barium swallow would show the contrast or they can do other methods such as mri bone scan because unfortunately cancer can spread the bone and once it spreads the bone you know that is like end stage unfortunately or they can do something called a laparoscopy and a laparoscopy is basically when there's a small incision in the abdomen and the surgeon uses a thin light tube laparoscope i think i've covered a lot in this time and esophageal cancer is very serious is not something we play about because if you can't eat food what is going to happen to you prevention is better than cure so if you know somebody who have continuous acid reflux like it just can't get better encourage them to go and check it out because it can be something serious it can be something life-threatening and you don't want to see a loved one suffering it's better you catch it early than you catch it late and there's nothing you can do so this is my video on esophageal cancer i hope it was informative i hope you learned something and i hope you can take this the words that i'm saying and impart it onto somebody else because that is my hope with this channel that i make informative content that you can take and pass on remember i am not a doctor i am not a medic i'm not a licensed medical professional so everything that i say is based on what i've read in school and what i'm reading um online so if you have questions ask your doctor Please go to your doctor and ask your doctor. Please. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you guys learned something. And like, share, comment, and subscribe, please. Uh, and yes, we'll see you in the next video where I talk about another... I don't know if I'm going to talk about another cancer or maybe something else. But the hope is that each month when there's some awareness going on i can sit down and i can speak to you about it in a simplified way and you can understand it and you can impart the knowledge because that's what we're here to do spread knowledge so that everybody leaves with more knowledge than what they came with so thank you and bye everyone have a good week